Well, not a lot of noise has been made over some recent developments surrounding the Elk Commission's uh, proposal to introduce, um, well, they call them pen hunts, I call them pen shoots. Um, and uh, there is some news on that front. And a real pleasure to welcome Brian Rudick, who is the hunting chair for the Alberta Fish and Game Association to the program. Brian, thanks very much for uh, spending a little bit of time with us and talking about this issue. Well, thanks for having me, Michael. It's uh, good to have a chat with you once again. So uh, bring us up to speed, because as I said off the top, there have been some developments, and uh, I think the news is pretty positive. Yeah, I believe so, too. Uh, of course, there was a, uh, as you mentioned, a request put in by the Alberta Elk Commission to once again look at uh, servant harvest preserves, they call them, but I agree with you completely. They're, they're, they're shoot farms. Uh, I don't even like to use the term hunt because hunting has a, a pretty historical significant meaning and uh, it means a lot to me as well. So uh, we did voice our opposition to this. Uh, we sent letters into the Minister of Agriculture, of course, who oversees uh, this particular item. And uh, we received a notification here would have been, I believe, early November from Tim Schultz, who was the uh, chief of staff for the office of the Minister of Agriculture, and uh, informing us of the good news that uh, the request had died on the committee floor. So we were pretty happy to see that. How close did we dodge a bullet here? Because, I mean, had we gone down this path, Brian, uh, it's it's one that's reared its ugly head over the years. Um, you know, it 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 probably cracks the door open a little bit towards paid hunting and, and maybe get your response to why that is such a bad idea. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly, Michael. I think we did really dodge the bullet here because I think uh, kind of the situation with the uh, province, with economic things, the way that they've gone with the uh, pandemic, uh, I believe the government was much more open to looking at ideas such as this to try to, to bolster the economy. So I really believe that uh, maybe, although we have seen this request surface periodically, pretty much on a regular basis, I think this time maybe there was a little more of a serious look at it. Just communications that I had pe with people that uh, are in politics and that, I think that there was a, a, a lot more of a, a look at at this request this time. Um, as far as, uh, you know, the seriousness of, of bringing this in, I think we've got a lot of concerns involved around uh, not just the servant harvest preserves or the shoot farms, but but also just with the game farming industry in general. Um, there's there's quite a number of concerns that have, have been brought forward over the years by many different associations, including Alberta Fish and Game Association and and I think it's really important that we stay on top of this. And of course, uh, you know, one of the big health risks with something like this is, is chronic wasting disease. And a matter of fact, we've even seen the first case of a white-tailed deer contracting COVID. Um, no indications that, that it's, it's uh, you know, causing an issue in the deer, but uh, they can, they can host the, uh, the, uh, the virus. Um, it, it literally is opening Pandora's box. Should we look at again, a, a situation where we're encouraging large groups of animals to be penned together um, like elk or deer, that type of thing. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, it's it's pretty much been established that uh, CWD has been established in Canada via uh, game farms with, uh, you know, the first case is showing up in Saskatchewan with uh, with positive testing elk that were brought up for, for game farming purposes. And uh, so we do know and, and do recognize that CWD has def definitely been a serious concern in the game farming and hunt farm industry um as far as the covid that that was an interesting one i guess that they've had some very high positive test rates down in in some of the states the articles that i've read on it uh, say that it is transferable to humans and they're recommending you take precautions when you're field dressing animals again nothing so far that seems to indicate that there is 
issues with the deer itself uh, being affected by COVID, but but they really uh, recommended not working around the mouth or uh, you know anything that you could possibly breathe in something from the deer that would uh, transfer the COVID from the deer to the human. Uh, so yeah, big big uh, change there or big interesting news that's come out of uh, out of the whole COVID thing. The other thing with CWD that you know if something positive came out of CWD. Uh, right around the time the announcement was made that the hunt farm uh, request had died at the committee floor, uh, we heard of our first case of CWD in Manitoba. And uh, I'm not uh, 100% sure if that had anything to do on the decision here in Alberta, but uh, you know, it's just another indication of why we have to stay on top of CWD and anything that we allow to happen that could extend or increase CWD instances is has got to be an absolute no. No, I was really kind of flabbergasted when I heard this request going in again with what we know about CWD and its transfer. Now, uh, I I was kind of uh, having a hard time believing that they were even considering it. One of the, I, I guess, one of the things that is starting to emerge from this whole chronic wasting disease discussion, Brian, is the fact that there needs to be uh, provincial cooperation. Um, in, uh, I had an opportunity to sit down with uh, Minister Nixon, and uh, he talks about some frustration um, in in not being able to come to some kind of a deal with Saskatchewan and on how best to to deal with this because deer don't recognize borders um so where where where's the alberta fishing game association on this and and trying to i guess uh, go beyond our borders and and maybe work with uh with other um like-minded organizations yeah we're definitely trying to expand that uh that communication between different provinces different groups uh you know anyone who's facing the same kind of challenges that we are with cwd uh, personally, I've been involved with webinars from uh, Saskatchewan, British Columbia, Norway. So uh, it's good to hear what others are trying and, and the uh, steps that they're taking to try to reduce or, or eliminate CWD. Uh, there's a lot of fantastic research going on as far as ways that they can, uh, can better handle, better deal with CWD or hopefully eventually even eliminate it. Um, so even nationally, I think that uh, we're seeing a lot more of a movement now for uh, the elimination of game farming. So there is uh, a fair bit of pressure being put on governments now just in that regard completely. Uh, so that would include the hunt farms and uh, it's, driven a lot by by CWD and other diseases uh, that can be the result of, of these types of practices. I'm even hearing some rumblings about a potential vaccine. They have been working on a vaccine. I was fortunate enough to sit in on a webinar that involved uh, professors from the University of Alberta and University of Calgary, uh, and they have been working on a vaccine. I don't know the latest uh, development along that, but I know at the time that I attended the webinar, they were effectively increasing the life expectancy of mice infected with CWD that had the traits of, of the deer population. Uh, the only bad part about it, it is it was kind of a double-edged sword because of course, all of those extra years that the, the mice lived, they would be able to transmit CWD. So the, the current vaccine meant that, uh, or the way it stood at that time anyways, meant that they could probably extend the life of the deer, but it wouldn't eliminate the transfer of, of CWD. So uh, was kind of double-edged, but definitely uh, a light on the horizon for possibilities down the road, right? So they're doing some excellent work. Uh, there's all kinds of studies going on within our province, within our country, and of course, uh, across the world, everywhere that, that there's been the effect of CWDC. 
Well, I think as long as we have folks like you, the Alberta Fishing Game Association and others that are paying attention to these issues, we've got a chance of coming out the other side uh, relatively unscathed. Brian, listen, thanks so much. Uh, wish you all the best over the uh, holiday season and uh, look forward to catching up with you in the new year and, and uh, all the news that's surrounding hunting here in Alberta. You bet. Thanks, Michael. And uh, best to you and you, yours for uh... A very Merry Christmas, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, I'm sure.